Okay, so let's uh, take a quick little tour around Xcode, specifically where they uh, dropped us here. Um, a lot of this is self-explanatory. Your um, ID, we, we're going to break off into a separate video. Uh, version number, all right, 1.0, easy enough. Devices, you now get a nice easy way of going over here and just saying iPhone, iPad, or whether or not this is going to be universal. If you do do that, then you've got uh, two little sections to fill in your artwork. Uh, for uh, your app icons, your launch images, and uh, then deployment target. Uh, if you're not doing anything that's, I guess, too specific to 4.3, you could probably lower this down to 4.0 just for people, I guess, that haven't up to, upgraded to the, uh, the latest OS yet. And then this main interface you don't need to worry about. Uh, and in fact, for what we're doing with um, Cocos here, you don't have to worry about toggling on or off these supported device orientations that um, I believe solely gets handled in one of the files that we're going to uh, mess around with in just a little bit. And then for launch images, you um, definitely have the option to overwrite the um, Cocos 2D one here. So if you uh, right click on this, you can show it in the finder. And this is just going to put you into the resources folder of, how come I'm not seeing it? Well, it doesn't matter. We'll go find it ourselves. It is, oh, let's see, the basics. Here we go. Oh, that's just something I was messing with before. And then double click inside of here, resources, and then you can find um, all of your, uh, all of those images in there. So um, what might be easiest would just be overriding uh, what's already in here, or you can just open it up, edit it in um, Photoshop, whatever and um, save it back out. And your default uh, images are in here as well. And let's see, is there one, a big one for the iPad? Maybe not. Anyway, back over here. Uh, let's continue running through here. Okay. See, I deleted that file out, so now it shows it as red. Let me just go ahead and dump that all together. Okay. Um, Let's uh, let's just go ahead and run this in the simulator. I do have uh, my iPad connected at the moment, so you're seeing Justin's iPad in here. But if you have a universal app like this, you can choose between uh, testing the it in um, the iPad simulator or the uh, iPhone simulator. And let's go for the smaller of the two because usually the iPad pops up kind of big for the screen capture software here. And uh, for this particular template that we started with, um, what's probably going to happen, if I remember right, is it'll show up like this, but then it's going to flip, yep, sure enough, to the, um, uh, I guess it turned it to the left there, so counterclockwise, and I'll show you guys how to um, change that default where it's oriented uh, landscape. Uh, you do get some kind of basic options uh, over here in iOS Simulator. Unfortunately, there's no, like, uh, accelerometer settings to fool around with, like tilting, really, but you can do a shake gesture on it. You don't actually see a shake, I guess. Um, and then rotate it to the left. In fact, I think there's even a hotkey for that, isn't there? Well, I thought I was pressing it. Hey, maybe not. Um, let's get it back to where it was. And then you can even send it back to the home. Well, you can do that just by clicking right here. And then, let's see. I don't think there's too much left to talk about here. Uh, I guess what I'll try to do is um, test in the simulator as much as possible, but um, depending on the application or whatever we end up creating here, it might just be best for me to switch over to um, putting it on the actual device, and then I'll do my best to, I guess, screen capture the uh, my video camera or something like that. So uh, get that out of the way for a little bit or I'll just quit out of that. And I guess, and of course too, you can if you want to just see what it looks like in the iPad simulator, pop that guy up. And then um, you can see that uh, in this uh, list view over here, we've got our, uh, our classes and our images all thrown in uh, together here. And it's got the, uh, the Cocos classes that um, get compiled in with the, uh, the game. And um, we'll, of course, talk more about that when we're not just in a getting started video. But something that I should mention early on, too, just so you kind of know how to do it, is um, you do have some extra frameworks here. And that, um, let me make this a little bit more visible. visible. Well, these are your basic frameworks. Um, but if you ever get to a point where you're doing something that 
uh, requires some of the extra functionality, um, you might need to add that framework. And of course, if it's something that I'm teaching you guys how to do, I'll step you through this as well. But uh, you're going to go over here to, here it is, link binary with libraries, and then click on this plus sign over here. Okay. And then just figure out what else you want to add in here. And one of them that I added recently was the store kit, okay, because I'd set up an in app purchase. So um, that requires that store kit dot framework. And this is easy, you just click on add, and then sure enough, it will show up. It should show up um, somewhere. Oh, okay, so store kit framework, that's fine. Uh, so, yeah, let's see. We could probably dump that down there with the other frameworks. And uh, if you ever want to kind of further organize things in here, like I just took that framework and put it inside of this um, folder, you can um, you can right click and go new uh, group. And that would create a new group inside of your resources. Uh, you could call this maybe sounds. Uh, you could do another one, new group. That would be um, vector artwork or I don't know, let's say PNGs. Generally, the, the file type that we bring in here, if it's an image, is always going to be PNGs anyway. And uh, there is no uh, right-click show and finder in here. Okay, So when I created this little group, it didn't actually go and create a folder inside of uh, my resources folder here. So just something to keep in mind there. It is just this kind of like, you know, ghostly <laughs> group just for your own benefit inside the program uh, to keep things organized on your end. And in terms of actually copying files to um, your resources folder here, uh, which you might want to do is, you can go two ways about this. You could just have uh, your file here on like say your desktop and then just drag it over into uh, your resources. What you're going to want to do then is click on destination, copy items into destination group folder if needed. Yeah, you need it, and then click on finish. And sure enough, it'll throw that guy right in there. You can get a preview of it, obviously. And then you can kind of further put it wherever you want. Uh, the other thing you could do is, is actually go and um, take the file and then put it into your resources folder. Okay, drop it in there. And see, for some reason it didn't, um, yeah, it started to put it all in there. This is usually what I do. I usually take the file itself, my, myself, put it into the resources folder, and then in Xcode, when I, you still have to go over here and do something like, oh, here, let me just rename this. That's just a different file name, so I don't get any conflicts. I still go and I drag it in to resources like that, but then when it prompt, prompts me to copy it in, I just say don't copy it in. Okay, so. Anyway, that's, that's just your own preference, however you feel like doing it. And then, let's see, what else we should talk about early, early on here. Um, you probably noticed that when we ran this file in the simulator, we, we got the frame rate. I'll show you guys how to take that off really fast. pop back up again. That would be in, oh gosh, now I kind of forget, is it in app delegate? Uh, yes. Director set display frame rate, you're just going to put that to no, save it. And then just so you guys know this, Really early on as well, if you want to go and set the default orientation, come on down here almost to the very end of this. So I'll move back up just a little bit. And then we're going to change this on line 88 from. And that should by default. <laughs> Yep, there we go. Set this to be uh, portrait. But let's keep working with it with uh, landscape, especially since 
Uh, later on, we're going to end up making a, a flipbook type app, and I think it just makes more sense to, to make that type app be landscape because that's probably what people are going to be expecting for some sort of picture app. And then running through, doo -doo 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 -doo, let's go back over here to um, just this main screen again. Uh, I'll, I'll end up showing you guys this in another video as well, but if you want to change your, uh, your product name, okay, which is also going to change your identifier, that grayed out part right there, um, you can. You just come over here into your build settings, scroll down to packaging, product name, and you can double click on this and just wipe out what you see in there. It might, it's, it, by default it has something like uh, some crazy characters and it says product, app, or something like that. So you call this basics course. Click on done, you'll see that once you do that, it'll change uh, that part right there. And then when it builds an app, it'll title it the basics course over that way. But for now, let's move on to something else. If you guys want to uh, explore that final product further, there's going to be a separate video for that, and then also a separate video for the, uh, the bundle identifier here. Otherwise, you guys could just skip past those, and we will actually start working with our um, first Cocos 2D layer. And, uh, well, that's all I'll tell you about that for now until you fire up the actual video.